We are still 4 million jobs short versus where we were pre-pandemic. Joining us now, Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick from House Intelligence, along with former CKE Restaurant CEO Andy Puzder. Uh, first to you, Congressman, let's look at this video of civilians putting up a fight against Putin again. Watch this. Let's show it again. <laughs> Okay, Congressman, they, are, they want to fight for their country. They're in a moment of desperation. Last night, President Biden had an anti-Russia, pro-Ukraine passages. It inspired the only real partisan unity in the chamber. But why no U.S. oil embargo on Russia like we did with Iran? I mean, we're funding Putin's <clears throat> war machine. Ukraine is desperate now. Why, not, and why no embargo? Liz, we are sending tens of millions of dollars per day, not per week, not per month, per day to Russia uh, in oil. Uh, th this government is funding this, these atrocities you're seeing on TV. Why are they not doing it? For domestic political considerations. It breaks my heart to say it, but they're worried about further rising gas prices and the effect that that will have on them politically. It is outrageous. It, it, the world is completely upside down when we are sanctioning the government on the one hand, and on the other hand, we are buying oil from Russia uh, and sending them tens of millions of dollars a day. Uh, we have to cut off, not only cut off oil imports from Russia immediately, that's got to be done, we have to sanction exports. That's the only way you're going to tie, uh, you know, tighten the noose around Vladimir Putin. That's the only thing he understands. He doesn't understand summits. He doesn't understand diplomacy. Mm. He understands shutting down his economy and get his, getting his surrounding oligarchs to come down on it. Yeah, and he, Andy, he clearly doesn't care about sanctions. The awful irony is Putin is making even more money from oil as it goes higher due to his attacks in Ukraine. You know, the Ukrainians are absolutely right. We're not doing enough. We're not doing enough to stop these attacks. I'm wondering if they were attacking Germany, if we'd all of a sudden start doing enough. We need to cut off these exports. The Congressman is absolutely right. We need to cut off, cut off the exports, uh, put tariffs on the exports, make it very difficult for him to get this money. You know, this is how Ronald Reagan defeated the Soviet Union. A big element of that defeat was not only our military spending, because we had the economy to back up the spending, but we drove down the price of oil. We can drive down the price of oil again by driving up American production. If we do that, the price of oil will be impacted. We can cut off the Russians, and we can make some progress on this thing. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear. You know, <laughs> CNN did an exit uh, poll of the reaction to the president's speech last night, Congressman. It actually was lower than his speech last year. He had a lower <clears throat> approval rating. Uh, you know, lots of talk about what happened with the speech last night. Senator Joe Manchin sat with GOP Senator Mitt Romney. Uh, let's start with what we saw on camera. Nancy Pelosi, a moment there, going viral. Uh, let's watch what happened last night. Watch this. I know it works. Investigating crime prevention and community policing, cops who walk the beat. Putin may circle Kyiv with tanks, but he'll never gain the hearts and souls of the Iranian people. There are more corporations incorporated in America than every other state in America combined. And I still won 36 years in a row. I think I have a better idea to fight inflation. Lower your costs, not your wages. And our troops in Iraq have faced, in Afghanistan, have faced many dangers. One being stationed at bases, breathing in toxic smoke from burn pits. Many of you have been there. I've been in and out of Iraq and Afghanistan over 40 times. Okay, <laughs> Congressman, a lot of that, you know, was misstatements, garbled. Some of it was wrong and misleading. He also falsely said tax cuts benefit just to 1% when taxes went up for the upper brackets. And the New York Times already said everyone got tax cuts. And the Washington Post already gave that claim three Pinocchios. What was your take on the address last night? Well, uh, we all collectively well, almost... Uh, we all almost Congressman. Yeah, I'm sorry. We all almost collectively fell off our chair when he said we got to secure the border. Uh, my God, uh, where has he been for the past year? when the borders have been wide open. Um, I'm glad he says we got to start supporting the police. Uh, it should have been long, that's long overdue. Uh, our veterans and our police officers are our frontline heroes, and yet he's got to make a statement saying we need to fund the police. I mean, think about that, Liz. The fact that the president had to make that statement, that clarification, tells you how far left his party has gone.
Um, and with the border, I mean, it was just laughable. It really was. Yeah, the border technology, Andy, he was talking about, is really about intercepting drugs. It's not about the record high of uh, the equivalent of Kansas crossing the border. And as for defund the police, uh, you know, we, nothing about the far left weak on crime prosecutors setting felons free on U.S. city streets. And, uh, you know, the chaotic crime spikes going higher. You know, the, Andy, the, the president's plan for cutting costs is saying to businesses, simply go ahead and cut costs. Why, why didn't anyone think of this? Andy, did you think of this ahead of time? <laughs> yeah, well, of course, everybody's trying to cut costs. Look, uh, by the way, nobody's talking about cutting wages. Wages are soaring at, a, at an historic pace. I mean, they're really growing very fast. The problem is, because of Biden's spending, particularly the $1.9 trillion last year at this time, uh, inflation yes, is soaring much higher than wages. So even yes, though wages are going up, uh, they, they're, 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 it's not really impacting people, people's pocketbooks because everything costs more. So nobody's talking about cutting wages. And, of course, businesses well, are, it's okay. are constantly trying to figure out how to reduce costs. Yeah, I mean, it's okay for people to earn more money. But the thing is about record high inflation. We hear you, uh, Andy. But, you know, by the way, the State of the Union addresses really don't change uh, what is going on with the approval ratings. Uh, we're going to, no. that's what, that's the point. Your, uh, the final word, Andy, is um, he's talking up more government spending, Andy, at a time when he in inherited the V-shaped economy. We don't need more government money plowing into the system. Your final word, Andy. Look, we, uh, we had $19.2 trillion in GDP back in 2019 after spending $5.3 trillion dollars uh, under President Biden last year, we were up to 19.8. It was a 2% improvement that we bought with $5.3 right. trillion. To brag about that kind of economic growth, you know, that's nothing to be proud of. Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick, Andy Puster, thanks for spending time with us. It's good to see you both.